worship God. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. To the love of God. To the love of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithful faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please pray with me the prayer of the day. Loving God, we have not known Jesus in the flesh, flesh yet we are called to be his witnesses. Send us your spirit from on high that we may live by the life of Jesus and radiate his love to all whom we know. We ask this in his name, confident that you will hear us. Amen. Cool. The reading for today is from the book of Job, 41 verses 1 through 8 and Job 42 verses 1 through 17. Can you draw a leviathan with a fish hook or press down its tongue with a cord? Can you put a rope in its nose or pierce its jaw with a hook? Will it make many supplications to you? Will it speak soft words to you? Will it make a covenant with you to be taken as your servant forever? Will you play with it as with a bird or will you put it on a leash for your girls? Will traders bargain over it Will they divide it among the merchants? Can you fill its skin and with harpoons, or its head with fishing spears? Lay hands on it. Think of the battle. You will not do it again. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, Things too un wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me, I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I despise myself, and repent in dust and ashes. After the Lord had spoken these words to Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against you, and against your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now, therefore, take seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you, for I will accept his prayer, not to deal with you according to your folly. For you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has done. So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zephar the Nephonite, 
went and did what the Lord had told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters, and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him by all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him, and each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, and he had fourteen thousand sheep, six thousand camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first, first Jemaniah, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Kapuch. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this Job lived for one hundred and forty years, and saw his children, and his children's children, four generations, and Job died old and full of days. This is the word of the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things. Those whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of all nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Shout with joy to the Lord, all ye lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King the Lord. Let the sea roar and all to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Our time with Job comes to a conclusion this morning. We've journeyed with Job through his losses, through his health issues, through his friends' attempts to console and to help Job understand why he is suffering. Throughout this book, the book, we have seen Job's relationship with God change. Job's relationship becomes more direct. He speaks to God through prayer and lament. Job questions God's actions and inactions towards his life and the life of the world. Last week, after hearing Job's demands that God be accountable for what has happened to him, God's presence becomes known. God challenges Job for having the nerve to question and make demands of God and takes Job on a tour of creation to show him proof that God is indeed active. Today's Job is a contrite Job. Leading into, today, to, into today's passage, Job has worn his emotions on his sleeve and gave these emotions full flow whenever he spoke to God. But through it all, these were honest and direct conversations. Job kept, keeps asking the question, why? But through this passage, it becomes clear that he never fully comprehended the question. And so, he could never fully understand an answer. Now Job tells God he is ashamed that he spoke of things he didn't understand and of things he did not know. Job displays a sense of humility in the face of God's majesty and mystery. If you were to place all this into a self-awareness tool, it would be clear that Job didn't know what he didn't know. 
whenever he was lamenting and claiming God was persecuting him. But now he tells God that he will listen. Job tells God that he takes back all the things he has said. He recants it all. Job forgives God. God forgives gives Job and shows that their relationship is still a loving one. In this story, God has the final say. And God has something to say to Job's three friends who at first sat silent vigil with him after his losses and then mistakenly tried to help Job find some rationale for these losses and health issues. The friends tell Job that if he is suffering, then it is because something of something he has done, something he needs to correct within himself, and that once he does, he will find peace and everything will be all right. In essence, the three friends accuse Job of not being pious enough. And remember that when the story began, God boasted that Job was blameless and upright, a perfect example of a pious person. At one point in this book, Job rebukes his friends and despite his pain and suffering, remains faithful to God and to God's promises. The translation we had heard earlier has God commending Job for speaking rightly. A better translation is speaking of me what is right. The difference in the translation is subtle, but it is an important one. If Job, despite everything, has spoken rightly, then his friends have spoken the exact opposite. What they have told Job about God and God's relationship with him was just plain wrong. It is what we now call bad theology. The friends, as we had heard, have earned God's wrath. But instead of being punished, as they would argue should be the case, God instead instructs them to go to Job. Make a burnt offering and Job will pray for them. The three do as they are told and Job accepts their apology and does indeed pray for them. And we are never told what Job said in his prayer what he asked God to do. We are led to the edge of the prayer and then are left right over it. I don't think we need to know exactly what was said because we can see what was in Job's heart and we know what happens next so we can trust that what he had spoke, he had spoken rightly. God accepts Job's prayer, forgives the three men, and all the relationships are made right again. Job's relationship with the world is restored. He, has a new, he gains a new family. He prospers. He lives another 140 years, and as the story says, was full of days when he died. Some may read this story and say that if you are faithful through your personal pain and suffering, that God will restore you at the end of it. And certainly there is an argument to be made that this restorative gift of grace we have received makes this a valid perspective for some faith communities. Except that, at least from the Lutheran perspective, nothing we do earns or enhances the gift of grace. It is one that is freely given. God's actions, not our actions or not our works, are what offers grace. But in Job's time, with Jesus' resurrection still centuries off, there was a belief that there was a distinct and direct connection between prosperity and piety. But a deeper reflection on Job's story should move beyond such connections. There are more important things that we can take away from what we have heard over the course of the past five weeks. Job's story calls us to consider our relationship with God. God commends Job for speaking rightly, which leaves us to ponder what is right 
and do we speak rightly? Is there a disconnect between our speaking rightly and our acting rightly? When we are faced with suffering or injustice, is our faith such that we can speak frankly and honestly and directly to God on behalf of others, on behalf of the world? Job's story calls us into a prayerful life in good times and in bad. And Job underscores the importance of speaking honestly to God by giving voice to the pain we feel and to the pain we witness. And not laying blame or trying to comprehend how a situation came to pass, but rather looking for how God could be active in the world and to continue to believe that God is always present, always loving, and always just. When we speak and act rightly, relationships are repaired or made whole. Equality and harmony are present and grace abounds in life. And God's actions are, in these moments are made known to the world. May you be safe and may you be joyous in the days ahead. Living together in trust and in hope, we confess our faith using the words of the, of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue the service with the prayers of intercession. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church, 
Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for our nations, especially Canada and the United States, who recently celebrated their nationhoods. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need. For all who are tired, feeling despair, sick or oppressed. Today we pray especially for Sandy, Paul, Bernice, Karen, Peter, Tyson, Jake, Klaus, Joyce, Roseanne, Audrey, Helen, as well as all those we name before you, either silently or out loud. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that bond keeps us bound. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this congregation. Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for healthcare workers, for emergency service workers, for store clerks, for family members, and all who work to provide food and other necessity, necessities during this pandemic. May they all remain safe until we gather again. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers of God and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Lord. Amen. As we have since the pandemic began, we share a sign of peace using sign language. And this, once we are able to gather once again in the sanctuary, will be the way we will share it for a while. So remember... Peace be with you, and also with you. So let us share a sign of peace with one another. Because we belong to God, we are bold to pray in the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Now receive into your hearts and into your lives the blessings of our Lord. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.